Hi Herb, this is my 2007 Jeep Liberty. I'm going to be doing the cooling system over Yonet. I'm going to go pretty fast with this uh, and follow the uh, the practical rubric. I'll try to follow this as close as possible as I can. So the first one is the coolant flow direction. Coolant flow direction is from the uh, top uh, hose through the radiator down through the lower hose right there uh, to the water pump and then pumps it around the engine block heads and then out through the hot side again. Uh, uh, location of the thermostat. So thermostat is located n right down there. It's after this clamp there. Uh, the location of the water pump is it's right here. It's just a front mounted water pump. Uh, this one doesn't have a clutch fan on it. This has a electric fan, so it's very accessible. Uh, heater core. Heater core is located in the back there. It's actually uh, on the other side of this firewall. It's in the passenger uh, compartment area in the HVAC system there. There's two lines going to it. This one's the hot one, so it goes all the way through there, kind of tees in there. Not tees in, but uh, goes through this hose inside, then it cools by the blower motor and then get, uh, comes out through this line right here and dumps out the cooler coolant into the side which is on or well at the lower road uh, lower rat hose side so it kind of mixes cool coolant with cool coolant and this hot coolant comes from the block so it doesn't mix these two together they stay separate uh, location of any coolant lines for other purposes. Uh, this vehicle doesn't have any more coolant lines. Uh, it's just uh, the heater core lines. Uh, there's no uh, lines that go through the throttle body. Uh, this vehicle does not have them. Uh, next one is the coolant temperature sender. Uh, you kind of, kind of hard to see, but it's it's this connector right here. There's a sensor that's uh, on the top of the engine. Uh, that's the temp sensor there. Uh, location of the cooling fan relay. Cooling fan relay, actually I already took it out. It's uh, the rat fan, it's this relay right here. Took it out, there it is. Uh, it has uh, just your regular terminals. I don't know if you can you can focus on this. Oh yeah, you can. So it has 86, 85, 30, and 87. So these are your negative and positive, and this is your closing side. So when it closes, when the PCM sends the uh, uh, command, it will close the side and the, the fan will will turn on. And how can you turn this fan without the relay? Well, you can jump uh, two posts. There will be the uh, 30 and 87. And then when you jump these with a the wire, the fan will be in. Like that. Uh, next. Sorry about the focus. Um, how the radiator or heater core works. Uh, I kind of explained how a little bit how the heater core works. Just a small radiator. Uh, uh, well, radiator is the, it, has, it has a hot side. So this is the hot side, which comes from the top. Uh, and it's a cross flow radiator, meaning that there's well, this is the condenser, but it's the same idea. There's these tubes that go across. It's a cross flow radiator. They go across. So the coolant, hot coolant flows across the radiator and then down through the lower red hose right there. Now there's these fins which help uh, connect the the, um, the the pipes, the tubes, and they absorb more heat and they kind of catch the wind that comes in and the heat uh, cools the radiator more, more efficient. Uh, how the radiator heater work? Uh, identify a leak points on the cooling system. A leak point can be uh, your rat cap. Maybe the tank can leak if it's uh, worn or degraded. Uh, your cooling hoses. 
heater core hoses, especially the connections there, the thermostat. Uh, I actually have a small leak on my rack cap. I need to replace that. Yeah, I take this vehicle off road, so it's a little bit messy here, like the engine compartment and everything. Sorry about that. Um, the next one is identify cooling system problems. So first one, if the thermostat was completely seized shut. If it's completely seized shut, it means that it's just running in that small uh, coolant loop and it will heat up. The engine will heat up very, very fast and it will not cool properly because there's no, no access to the radiator. So it will eventually overheat and cause uh, damage to the engine. Uh, if it's slightly open, if the uh, if it's slightly open, it will be kind of hard to warm up. It will warm up, but it will not have the um, correct like warm up period, and uh, will not cool very efficiently. Uh, when it's fully opened, it will be very very hard to uh, heat up the engine. Uh, it uh, will require you to maybe drive for extended periods of time to you because you're pushing the coolant through the whole radiator and everything uh, when like the whole f volume of of the coolant and uh, instead of pushing small volume which is in the engine block you're pushing the whole and it whole volume and it is very uh, uh, it's very inefficient. Uh, what if a Volkswagen uh, plastic impeller pump uh, explodes and it's not not turning? Well, it's you just buy a new car. No, just kidding. Uh, you well, uh, if the impeller is not turning, it means there's no centrifugal force in the coolant pump, and uh, it means that there's no coolant flow. So the engine will have hot spots somewhere in, on the on the block. And uh, it will create uh, very bad problems for the pistons, and uh, the engine can be can have a catastrophic failure. This is the wiring diagram for the 2007 Jeep Liberty radiator fan. Uh, so you have your battery, your fuse, and your 30 and your 86. That's the hot side. So the PCM uh, when they Operating temperature reaches each a certain limit. It uh, reads the temp sensor, and if it's hot, it sends out a signal to shut the relay. So, it sends a signal uh, on the ground side, which energizes the energizes the coil, closes your switch, which then powers your fan, and this is ground for the fan.